surprised to see Team Liquid come in here and actually take King's Row. So do you actually like the way that this team is structured now compared to before? I mean, there are two things that are now missing from the Liquid lineup. One, they brought mm -hmm. in Bonifil to do a lot of that shot calling aspect and to make the calls and to lead the team so Dummy didn't have to do as much of it. And then two, Zoms is kind of the young kid that's great with Hitscan, great with Widow, great with McCree, and kind of hit everything and kill everyone. Uh, now that they lose both of those things, of course, ID has a shot calling chops and Minstrel did, I think, a decent amount in his time at Envy, uh, along with Nubris, do you feel like the way that they're going to have to do things differently here is going to help them? This really is going to put Dummy in a more high-pressure situation uh, where he's going to have to play the hitscan character. It will be a little bit higher pressure, I agree, but I think that in this patch in particular, where you don't necessarily need a Lockdown Widow or McCree, where ID is so good on those projectile DPS characters, I think, if anything, it's going to take pressure off a of Dummy, because Dummy had a lot of pressure on him to be the sort of projectile DPS master, and I don't think that was really his best role. I think Dummy is better when he's on tanks, when he's on your Winstons, your Zaryas, etc., and letting ID instead play the Zaryas and Genjis, I think, would be a huge boon to Team Liquid compared to what they were running before. Yeah, I yeah, do think I, this patch is really good for them. Like the best I think it's fun too. Because AZK is a, is a pretty solid hitscan player himself. He was always running a McCree as well. So I think I never really have a problem with the individual players that Team Liquid ever acquires. I just think you need to give a roster more than two weeks together to start like really shaking off the rust here and there. Because there's a lot of times I've seen Team Liquid play that I'm like, oh, well, that shouldn't have happened if they were two seconds closer together. If the coordinations were better, they would have won that fight. And that's been the case for them for such a long time because they just don't have a cohesive roster. It's been the most volatile, the most turned over roster in all of Overwatch. I mean, really what's going to help Liquid is that ID being a Quake player and being a Farrah main, which he's really not been able to do on all the teams, including the previous time on his stint with Liquid or before they got signed to Liquid. It's going to help him at least in confidence in being the main, one of the main DPS of the team. All right, we'll take a look here at the defense coming out from the side of Gale Force Esports. It is going to be Shake on the Mercy, Torque on the 76, Harblue on Torbjorn, Nicholas on the defensive Farah, JKW on Reinhardt, and Joe Meister on the Roadhog. So once again, Junkrat not being used by defense. Yeah, well, they're going Torb. They're, they're rocking the Envious style here, and I think it's smart. You've seen how successful it is for Envy, and it really it, it puts a lot of pressure on your Farah. But also defensive Farrah instead of defensive Junkrat. So the, the Torb decision actually doesn't surprise me as much as Nicholas deciding to go this instead of Junkrat or Widow. I will not waste this opportunity. Well, Harblue is going to go down immediately from ID. ID was able to get the rocket over the shield. It was a good shot. Now there's a 65 advantage in favor of Team Liquid and ID being really surgical about going forward here, landing good poke. And I think Team Liquid is going to have a big opportunity here pretty soon. And they're rushing right in. Reinhardt got in. AZK taking out Nicholas to start this out. And Team Liquid being super decisive as they move in. And this might be point A already in favor of Team Liquid. Uh, with Shake dying, that's definitely point A. As soon as that Mercy went down, that fight was absolutely over. Only Harblue uh, came back up. Now he's going to be on Winston. He's played the best of Winston. He's actually been a really good standout for Gale Force on this map, on Winston, on defense. He's been super smart. That was the day they, they announced they were parting ways with him. I said, well, he just had his best game for you guys on King's Row, and it was on Winston. So it'll be interesting to see what he gets done on that hero. There's no one happier than ID in this current meta of being able to play one of the main DPSs on Farah. He's had a pretty like tough time and had to play the flex, the flex role this entire time through teams because of the hit scan meta that's happened. So this doesn't favor his style. All right, well, here comes the offense team looking, moving forward again. Bezwar looking for the opportunity to drop the Earth Hammer, er, Earth, <laughs> Earth Shatter when he can. And uh, Mesra, of course, one of the original Reinhardts in the game, going all the way back to Beta 1. Uh, pretty good at the hero in general. Now he is looking for his opportunity. Earthshatter might be on the menu anytime. Being very patient, I want to use it, but Hammer will come down. Knocks out a few people for Team Liquid. As AZK taking out Nicholas. Mesra taking out JKW. Two kills here for Team Liquid as they rush in. And ID going to blow the barrage on top of Mercy. Joe Meister and Jake are both out of here. They're just murdering, and AZK has been absolutely crushing people on his Soldier 76. I think that I love that they're running Zarya here. He's saved a lot of lives. Maz got himself in a bad situation. It's absolutely fine because Zarya throws a shield on him. But Dummy also has the Graviton up. I think they're going to hold it for, for when they have some follow-up, but we've seen follow-up be as little as a Reinhardt Hammer going through that clump of players. Fire at will! 
Here we go. Another Graviton coming in in favor of the offense. ID cleaning up, getting the double kill right after. And ID has been having himself a game. And again, I think this is a really good meshing here at this Liquid Squad. ID is doing, I think, a lot more for them in this role than Dummy did. And Dummy is very comfortable on the Zarya here. Yeah, and yeah hit scan is doing just fine. Yeah, I mean, having AZK as your primary hit scan, he was always the primary McCree. But before it opened up Zombs, the Widow, and both them together had pretty standard last month that happened, as we've seen. With really the patch for meta shift, it really does help uh, with it. I agree with you. I think Zombie being able to play Zarya is a good thing. Well, here comes the Sun Bear coming up from the defense. Defense looking to turn this in their favor. Gale Force sort of getting bullied by Team Liquid here as things have gone on. Harbor, though, going to go to a very standard Reaper spot. Will be able to flank right back on the Dehang. Dehang in deep trouble. Has to Guardian Angel away. Will live, at least for now. And meanwhile, take a look at ID. ID has a barrage on the menu. Takes out as Dummy getting the double kill on the Harbor and Joe Meister. ID looking for the kill onto Farah midair. Not going to get it. But here comes the offensive res. Defense trying to capitalize on the Earth Shutter, not going to happen. And now ID over the back, looking for the Rockets. Will he get the last mid-air shot? Will not, but came also oh so close. As Team Liquid now pushing forward, Earth Shutter coming in from Mezvar. And will the Barrage be coming in? Mercy going to go down. The Barrage is not even needed here just yet. And Team Liquid just making this game their own right now. Harbor would finally take some AZK. This is a strange barrage coming through, but it does end up cracking the shield and opens up a lot of space coming in. His team was behind him. He looked like he was alone for a second, but now they're just really pressing the cart, making the defense force out. They don't have a resurrection on defense. Now desperation time comes into play as Nicholas comes up on Tracer. AZK was able to take out Nicholas right away. He's just in the back line, not even caring. Takes out Shake. Double kill here for AZK. Swing the pulse rifle around. Down goes Torque, and now Team Liquid very close to setting what's going to be a very quick time here on King's Row. Attack Pfizer coming for AZK. This should clean up the last few people. And I gotta say, Team Liquid coming in pretty strong against Gale Force. I think this new roster might be stronger than their old roster. Yeah, I mean, no. Pretty surprised by that. I, I really thought that Gale Force had been playing very good, but yeah, ID on Farah absolutely crushed it, and really this had really nice individual performances across the board. Yeah, the three things I noticed was one, Mezor, another huge game. Big plays out of him. He's probably one of the best tanks in North America. Always has been since the game first went into beta. Uh, two, AZK, great on Soldier. I mean, he's been playing a ton of McCree and Widow and previously the Farah for Liquid before, but I think Soldier fits him very well with, you know, the hit scan type of aim that he has. And the synergy between Dehang and ID might be unparalleled between any support and Farah main in the entirety of Overwatch, considering they have played together on EG and in Quake for like four to five years and won several championships together. To be able for Dehang to be the Mercy and just so happens now that he's playing with ID and a Farah Mercy meta is going to help them a lot, just in, in general. 437 is a pretty blazing fast time, and it really puts Gale Force in an awkward position of maybe not having to try to play standard. You can try to play standard and just play it a little bit better than the other team, or you can run a very aggressive comp to try to beat that time. So we'll see what they choose to go with. It looks like kind of a mix of the two right now with their queued up on as Hardblue is going to play that they're going to run the triple tank and Hardblue was on Winston. We'll see if he switches that up, but still on tank. He's going to play Roadhog instead, but this is a single support. Um, oftentimes, if you're trying to get very aggressive, you run a single support in a Lucio and then just kind of go all in and kill the Mercy before on, that, that resurrection comes up. We'll see, we'll see how this offense goes, but that is a super fast time to try to beat. The offense might change a few things up before it is all said and done, but taking a look at the defense coming out for the side of Team Liquid, it's going to be Minstrel on the Lucio, Mesrar on the Reinhardt, Dummy on Roadhog, ID on the Junkrat, AZK on 76, and Dehang on Mercy, and I really like this defense coming out from the side of Liquid right now. I think it covers a lot of things. I think I do like the Junkrat a little bit more than the Pharah. The 76 is still a good add, and the Roadhog, a decent fill-in for what used to be a spot that you'd usually see a McCree. I'll be busy I am also liking the Junkrat the more I see it. Uh, relative to the Farah, it's easier to play safe with the Junkrat. I, I understand having the defensive Farah probably helps the defensive Mercy get around easier and is allow them to not to die. But I think Junkrat has had the more punch and the more damage and the more reliable one that won't die as easy. Well, the timer is about to be on the way. This is a very quick time that Gale Force needs to beat. 437, not at all easy to get through on King's Row. This is one of the quicker times that you will get. 
So Gale Force or Path to Victory here is just cruising through point A and not letting Team Liquid get any defensive momentum whatsoever. Easier said than done, but it is something that needs to be done if Gale Force wants to win this map. Have to be an early poke going on. Both teams that poking out right now. Gale Force looking for an opportunity. And Team Liquid very content to stand back right now. They're not really contesting this early part. And ID already has a tire built up as Sean Cried. And Zarya going to pay the price as well as Farah. A double kill on the both TJO brothers here from ID. And that's why Junkrat is so good here on King's Row. Of course, it's out of really early resurrection that they did not want to have to use. And now it looks like they're getting a little bit desperate. Nicholas is getting very aggressive on his Farah, trying to jump in. JKW all alone now in front as the tank. Take him down. Mesrar was able to punch that immediately in the offense. The defense is letting the offense get to a point. They're just leaving Mesrar on it to contest a little bit. Poking that from back, but this may backfire though. They do have to blow up the resurrection. AZK now with the tack visor. auto aiming people down. Down goes Nicholas. Will he get a little bit more? Hard blue deep in on the point. And Team Liquid, they're bending, but they're not breaking here just yet. But the ground sun surge will pull three of them in. Both offense and defense getting into it. The offense, of course, responding a little bit quicker. But Team Liquid now being pretty aggressive, trying to push him out. Will hook back to Zarya. And Zarya going to bite it, and Team Liquid still hanging on here. And if you look at it, I'm not even sure they gave up a third. Maybe they did at the very end, but still a pretty good defense nonetheless. Two huge ultimates with no value there. The Graviton came late, the Earthshadow followed it up late. There was already a lot dead there. It'd be nice to have either one of those to combo with the ultimates that they now have up in the Barrage and Tactical Visor. So here comes the offense moving in, but again, ID already has another tire up, and oh my goodness, he blew himself up and didn't get a whole lot in return for it. Uh, Phil tire coming out from ID. Mesra, though, on the point looking for the earth shard. Will he drop the hammer here? Certainly he has the opportunity, but the justice raining from above from Nicholas. Gonna get the double kill. Nicholas still pretty much untouched here. A defensive res will come up, but Nicholas in a good position here thus far. Mesra got a charge in, and oh no! Farah hit the ground at the wrong time, and the defense now coming right back in. Mesra, the charge working out for him. But just like that, the offense off the res, starting to turn the spore in their favor. JKW on the W and Nicholas with the necessary cleanup. Jake went down, but he was able to get the res at the very last moment, and that will be enough to get them the point. Uh, still pretty solid hold from Liquid considering the time that they had an offense. GFE's really gonna get have to get things moving if they want to have any chance. I'm on fire! For Gale Force, for them to get through here on this last point, effectively, they need to have three on the cart the entire time through the streets phase. They need to get a quick Earth Shatter and wipe and just continually move. And Team Liquid, they've been playing Poison up for it. I'm not sure that's going to happen. But again, Gale Force, that's the only path of victory here for them. T JKW going to get hooked in, will not be able to get Earth Shatter down. And for Liquid here, that pick alone might have just sealed them the game. Here comes the Graviton. They only get Mesrar in that, and Mesrar able to take out Joe Meister after the Graviton. That's not the value that they wanted, but Gale Force, again, being a little bit desperate here because they need to somehow get things going. Yeah, I mean, they, they do have the ults to work with here. Torque is going to get in and try to recharge that Graviton. Hopefully, the next one gets a little more value, but they do have Earth Shatter, Barrage, and Resurrection. A lot of things to work with. They are making good time on the cart, but they have to just go unopposed throughout the rest of the map. All right, here comes Nicholas coming in from the back, looking to drop the barrage, will drop the barrage, takes out Dummy immediately, gets AZK. ID, though, a little bit higher on the Justice scale, takes him out with a rocket of his own. And now ID, will he also be dropping barrage? He will, more Justice raining from above. JKW going to go down. And this is gonna be a full hold for Team Liquid. And time-wise, with only less than 40 seconds left, GG will be called by Gale Force and Team Liquid going to take map one. And what has really been looking like a reinvigorated Team Liquid team. They yeah, look better I mean, than I remember them. Yeah, for sure. Oh, Go ahead, uh, Liquid just blazed through on offense so long, though, that even the defense would be a little bit shaky in the street phase. We don't really know what will happen at the end. That they had such a good attacking time that it didn't even matter. Uh, I think it caught a Gale Force a little bit off guard. They probably weren't expecting such a blitz like that, especially with Torb going down as the first pick of the game. I think that set the tone. You're already down 5v6, and it's, it's tough when that. You know, that's the risk when that, that happens. 
Well, the good thing is we're not going to Hollywood next because it's not in the map pool. So we're either going to Nepal or Dorado. If I'm Gale Force, I'd take them to Nepal. It's where they've shined the most. Uh, other teams have just not liked King of the Hill as much as Gale Force. And I think you got to do what got you in this position to begin with. And you just let your DPSs try to shine and go to King of the Hill. I completely agree. You definitely want to bring it to King of the Hill if you are on the T or Gale Force side. It's something that they've been really good at in the past. And why not bring Team Liquid there where you don't know how Team Liquid's going to go in a uh, full brawl? Maybe Gale Force will have the advantage there, but instead they are going to bring it to Dorado. So maybe they know something we don't. Or maybe Gale Force is just really well practiced on Dorado. But that I, will be our next map here in the series, first series of the day in Group B. I think it's the latter of the the two ZP. I feel like the teams, mm -hmm. all of them are just more practice on the payload maps. They all feel more confident um, in them. And that's just when, when I talk to them and I talk to the players and I ask them, why don't they pick King of the Hill? That's usually the answer that I get. I think as Overwatch Esports evolves and continues to grow, that the teams will, one, they got to get smarter in terms of their map bands, in terms of knowing the other team and what maps they like to play and then trying not to let them play and then actually trying to have some type of meta within the banning phase that exists in other games. And I think that will come with more time and more experience and more results that we get um, over time. All right, well, it's going to be Dorado. Gale Force has to win both anyway to be able to, uh, or, or, you know, they want to win both in the group stages. So, you know, why not take it to Dorado? As you mentioned, they're probably more practiced on it. And I think maybe we're associating, or at least I am, of the King of the Hill and Gale Force from their older days when you were able to rock those double tracers. And just, as you mentioned, King of the Hill, just kind of out of favor overall. Um, they need to look better than they, they did on their defense there, though. And it'll be interesting to see what strategies they run, if they are going to be running the Symmetra here on first, and to see if either team is going to run a Widowmaker, as it's been kind of out of favor, but some teams still choosing to run it here. Dorado, an interesting map. Well, Torque and Nicholas have been really favoring the Soldier Farah defense, at least on Hollywood and on King's Row, and looks like they're going to have the same thing here if it continues to be on Dorado. Uh, I do, I am kind of questioning the, the defense of Farah and how much I'm seeing it in these matches. I think offensive Farah at least has purpose in terms of trying to push the cart and have ults and try to snowball through the map, but Junkrat I seems to have been doing innocent. better, and I would think there would be an, an additional hit scan if you know that the, every team is running yeah, offensive Farah. Because fun. every team is, and oh, every map so far has been offensive Farah Mercy. It hasn't worked out so well, I think, as the teams have wanted it to. I think the only thing you can say in defense of the defense of Farah is that it's a little bit uh, better in terms of not feeding a Junkrat. That's the only real reason I can come up with where, with why you would run defensive Farah over defensive Junkrat, given what we've seen the two heroes do respectively, is that a Farah is not going to be feeding a Zarya a whole ton of charge. But even st even a, when dealing with a charge up Zarya, I'm not sure if that's enough of a reason to not run the Junkrat. But regardless, taking a look at the defense coming out from the Gale Force side, it's going to be Torque on the 76, Nicholas on Farah, JKW on Reinhardt, Shake on Mercy, Joe Meister on the Roadhog, and Harblu going to be on the defensive Reaper. Yeah, offensively, they're going to run something similar to what they ran on King's Row. It's IED and hang on the Farah Mercy combo. Dummy is going to play Zarya for him. Mez on Reinhardt's AZK on Soldier 76. And Minstrel on his good old standby, Lucio. Now, Gelfors with a single support. Mercy only. No Symmetry, no Lucio, no speed boost in or out. They're going with triple DPS, double tank, which is pretty much four DPS. Uh, I think I, they, they, try to, they might want to try to hold first point. This is what the defense is uh, for. Of course, game, so this is one of the easier uh, first points in the game to hold. This is where the offense will have a whole lot of trouble getting through if the defense is truly well prepared. But the offensive team Liquid right now looking pretty poised. The ID looking for his opportunity. Not going for a cute flanking shenanigans, just looking to go through the front. Not uh, just waiting, biding their time. And this still might work out well for Team Liquid. They're moving in. Harblu going to go down immediately to AZK and ID. And now ID going right into the back, looking for an extra kill. Will he be able to get it? Bouncing the soldier around. Did not get the kill somehow. I don't even know how Torque is still alive after enduring that barrage. But Minstrel will go down for the offense and a little bit back and forth on both sides. But the defense of Gale Force, at least for now, holding on. Oh no, just as I say that, AZK getting the double kill, taking out Shake, st stopping the possibility of any more resurrections. AZK just going absolutely crazy on this offensive 76 right now, turning things in the favor of Team Liquid, and Gale Force just not able to reestablish. 
Yeah, he continues to have a monster game. He's already got ultimate charge up dummy also with his ultimate going in. I'm not really sure exactly what Joe Meister is doing there unless they really think they're going to be able to stall this out. He's just donating his life. That, that was an interesting play. I mean, pretty equal alt charge for both teams. Maybe that's a little bit of a compilation of donating himself at the very end there, but very solid job from Liquid on offense. Both these maps, AZK having a great game uh, in this series so far. It looks like Soldier is fitting him quite well as his main over the McCree. Well, look at the offense right now. The offense is totally filled up on ultimates right now. ID has Barrage to hang on Mercy. Here comes the Graviton. Wombo combo is it on the menu. ID serving up the justice from above. Gang, the triple kill. The Graviton fully set up by Dummy. And as ID just lands another rocket to clean it up, there's the team kill horn. And that went absolutely perfectly for Team Liquid. And I gotta say, I mentioned it before earlier, but I really like the change up for Dummy on the tanks and ID on the projectile DPS. They just had that coordinated so well. ID was hiding up there forever, waiting for his moment. They had a really nice Graviton to make sure that they got the, the Mercy in the Graviton was the key part of that. Over the top, there's nothing you can do to stop that. Nice, Mitty. Mesra gonna drop the hammer, knocks down three defenders, moving in, trying to kill this other Reinhardt, not able to do it just yet, but still, Team Liquid with all the positioning advantage in the world. Resurrections will be coming out from both sides. We'll see if Gale Force can turn this back in their favor, but Team Liquid, again, looking like a different entity. Justice trying to rain here from Nicholas, will be taking out AZK. AZK trying to do his best, but not going to be good enough, as four kills coming out from Gale Force. Good stabilization coming out from them. I mean, it's about time. Gale Force needed a big Team White not only to save off the second checkpoint, to get some confidence going, and they're just not just gonna get rolled over like they did on King's Row. So we saw LG actually put up a pretty solid D here in the same position. Uh, Gale Force is gonna have to do the same unless they want Liquid to have a good time. We're looking at yeah, the defense, JKW. JKW does have an Earth Shatter at the ready, and he's well positioned here to deal with the offense potential. The offense has to be careful, Mesra can't uh, be too ham and going in there, but instead they're going to force JKW out. Now the offense is in great positioning. A AZK now busting out the tactical visor, has people in his sights, and the defense just scatters for cover, but not before ID is going to take out Joe Meister. And as a result now, the offense can be a lot more aggressive. AZK now is going to have nothing that really challenges him over the top. And ID going to pick up the two kills, one on the shake with that um, flank. And as a result now, the offense should be able to just push this next point. Getting there, Quark's doing his best All until he gets, uh, you know, hit in the face with a hammer. Generally going to slow someone down. And look, I mean, the Our ultimate advantage is coming in again uh, for the offense. It most importantly, of course, is Graviton. It's one of the most impactful ultimates in the entire game. Dummy also already has stuff. IED is going to look to get some poke in though, so that they can follow it up with the barrage. The Hang ID combo has certainly been better than Shake and Nicholas so far. Shake has gotten picked off more times uh, than he's been able to get the res. I'll take a look here for the offense. ID does not have a barrage up, but Dummy does have a Graviton. And if Dummy lands good enough Graviton, ID can just follow up with rockets and it is going to be enough. Gale Force really has to watch out for that. Even though Gale Force, of course, with coming the ultimates, they are fully loaded here. The only thing they're missing is Death Blossom. And the offense definitely has to be a little bit careful as well. Well, they also want to make sure to get the Mercy inside of that Graviton, too. And she's playing so far behind, so safe, that they decided just to kind of yeah, aggress. And AZK takes down two very early. IED follows it up with a kill of his own, forces out that Rex. Here comes Torque, though. Defensive attack visor on the way, as well as defensive sound barrier. Nicholas getting the double kill over the top. ID, though, immediately retaliating. Big offensive res coming in. A lot of those dead heroes coming right back into play here for Team Liquid. And ID now with the barrage and looking to get towards the back line as Dummy and AZK piling on. And Team Liquid, after both Mercies using the res, is going to come out here on top. And ID might not even need to use his barrage here for Team Liquid to win this game. Uh, Shake went down, the Graviton went in near the spawn to try to slow it down. Nick was trying to jump on the cart very late to it. Doesn't actually do it either. So a little bit of a misplay at the end. And other than maybe a solid hole in the middle portion of the map, this was all liquid again through Dorado. And the combination of Dehang and ID, incredible synergy right now. Dummy not having the to play the, uh, the hit can characters or even on DPS and just found the great home with Zarya in the current meta.
some of the end team liquid saying a time of 556 that is very quick for dorado especially when you consider the fact that many teams are not even able to get past the first point on dorado just because of how easy it is to defend I think that this is looking pretty good for Team Liquid here. They might start the day with a victory over Gale Force, and that would be huge, given the fact that Team Liquid, of course, is in a rebuilding phase, and we didn't know how this roster would perform coming into this match. Yeah, I mean, my concern was always about the cohesion, but I think though everything I've seen tonight shows that they uh, they have it together, and everyone seems to be on their best heroes. Uh, as you guys have mentioned, the meta does really help them out, and this combination of the Hang and IED has been just nothing short of phenomenal. You're allowing Dummy to play a great Zarya, too. Everyone seems to be shining on the heroes that they would like to be playing the most, and that cohesion, the combinations, everything has been clicking for them tonight. We haven't talked about it as much, but this is really on... Tork and Nicholas to get more done in these games. I think ID yeah. has been really winning the Faro War against Nicholas in general with Shake and, and Dehang. And in terms of the effectiveness of the Zarya and ults in terms of damage and, and, and shields, I think Dummy has actually done a much better job than Tork. And really with those two players, as they had been playing so great and made a name for the team when they were first playing in the Goosey Gamers weeklies, I think it really is up to them to step it up if this team is going to want to be one of the best teams in North America. Yeah, Harblue's also looked mm -hmm. a little uncomfortable tonight. He's been switching heroes a lot and really done nothing of note. He's gone from Reaper to Roadhog, and he's not hitting big hooks. He's not getting Death Blossoms. He's not even really getting enough damage on Reaper when he's playing it to get those Death Blossoms up. So he's been kind of struggling a little bit. I expected him to do a little better as well. I mean, across the board, no one's having just breakout games for Gale Force, and uh, it seems to be the opposite for Liquid. Really well, again, for Liquid, I think the biggest change for them is that I don't think Dummy was ever fully comfortable on the projectile DPS role. I think that Dummy in the off tank can make really good decisions and can bring things th through. I also think that Liquid wasn't necessarily making the best decisions. And I think that adding Minstrel yeah. and ID to the squad has helped really in both regards. And I think as a result, Team Liquid is looking way, way better. And now I feel like the matchup I want to see is Team Liquid versus NG Red because I think that would be absolutely astounding because we saw NG Red play both C9 and Envy pretty close at points here tonight and we're seeing Team Liquid really bring it to Gale Force. So seeing a Team Liquid versus NG Red matchup, that would be amazing. Well, wait a minute, ZP. Are we going to be watching Liquid versus Cloud9? We are. In a we little are. bit. And I, I, I know what you're saying, right? I, let's pick the other team in North America <laughs> that's like below the top team so we can see like mm -hmm. how they play. I want to see, and of course we're going to have to finish out this map if they finish it off 2-0, how they play against Cloud9 later. Cloud9 hasn't had much practice. They've had some time off. The one hero limit probably affects them in North America more than any other team as they are one of the three teams that have been vocally against with the one hero limit in these tournaments. And I think anything could happen to Cloud9. Of course, we should give them Cloud9 the benefit of the doubt of being the best team in NA, at least, with Envy. And they have been the best Overwatch team in the world probably previously for the last month, month and a half or so. Uh, and that that's all good and dandy. But at least in the last week or two, we've had E3, some time off. Who knows what Liquid could do? AZK is the French star. <laughs> something, 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 something. It could happen. Sick me. <laughs> All right, yeah, I, so we are ready. We are getting right back in the game. It is going to be the second half of the map coming in here, where, again, uh, Team Liquid, they set a pretty good time on the attack, and now they only have to defend for five minutes and 56 seconds, and this is a really good position to be in on Dorado, and again, you know, if Team Liquid is able to complete this out 2-0 over Gale Force, I just can't wait to see what comes of them later on in the night. Well, 556, a kind of middle-ish time, beatable, but they have to play really well to do it. So far, it does not look like Gale Force is up to the task of it. On defense, though, they're going to be running this Symmetra, so a lot is going to be on Minstrel if he can get this teleporter up. He's going to be playing that Sim Maz, of course, on Reinhardt's AZK has been killing it on Soldier 76. He'll remain on that hero dummy. It's going to off-class on the defensive Roadhog, IID on the defensive Junkrat, and to hang for the moment is on Lucio, but he will likely be going back to play Mercy. You know, I'm not a huge fan of Gale Force's attempt at that single support defense. Oh, thank you. I mean, I think they're trying to shut it down on the first point, as I thought, and maybe just finish out the game there and not even let uh, Liquid go through. But it's so risky of a play, and we saw what happened. Even though they were able to get the first two picks, it didn't matter because they only have Mercy. They're not able to speed boost out. And without, you know, Symmetra there or even the Lucio, there's nothing that you can 
really do. So I think it's still a safer bet to have. Yeah. If, you, if you can if you continue to ha uh, to count Snatcher as support, a, a double support. They were also running uh, Hard Blue on the defensive Reaper there too, and he looked all out of sorts. He wasn't really frontlining because he couldn't get enough poke in. He was trying to go to the right and got picked off really early there too. I'm just not sure about that hero pick either. Did not get anything done on that, so. All right, well, here we go. The timer is about to be underway. Team Liquid Defense going to be showing us their stuff. And on that defense, it's going to be AZK on the 76. Dummy on the Roadhog. Mesrar on the Reinhardt. Minstrel on Symmetra. ID on the defensive Junkrat. And Dehang on Mercy. So again, really like the defensive steps coming out here from the side of Liquid. I think it's probably one of the better ways of playing early defense on these points. And we'll see how it works out. Where again, they don't have to defend for a whole long of a time here. No, we see the standard, they, they go up to the top, they're holding right for the moment, but then as soon as the arch gets pressured, they're going to rotate to that arch. Now, we do have Roadhog trying to look for picks here. They're actually giving up a lot of space uh, on this very first push. They're giving up space, but they're also going further back in the courtyard where the defense realizes an advantage is dummy, going the hook down hard blue for first kill of the game. 65 now in favor of Liquid, and this is one map where usually people won't be too, too aggro after getting a kill just because the archway provides so much protection, and it is, is really easy to get punished if you go too much far beyond it. Early win in the Roadhog War. The Roadhog one-on-one -on -one war has become very real in the meta. Well, two people are able to get to the building. They do evade Dummy's hook, at least for now. Both teams uh, struggling for your position. And no, Harbo going to get hooked again. Dummy, though, uh, eating a lot of damage in the process as Jomeister taking out Mezvar. The offense uh, taking their time, but really making it work. They do have two kills here. Resurrection going to bring up some of those Fallen. As Dummy now back into fray, but here comes the Junkrat tire. ID is finally built. It goes to the back, runs JKW right over. But Nicholas has just been peppering the defense over and over again. Yeah, here, it does have a barrage at the ready. He really has not been accounted for, and Nicholas alone might be bringing Gale Force through this point. They're going to get this point. Dehang died. Minstrel died at 100% on Symmetra. It doesn't feel good, so he's going to actually just switch off with no teleporter ever going down. He's going to be on Lucio. And as Slasher has mentioned several times, now look at the ultimates between the Lucios. Joe Meister has it, Minstrel at 5%. I mean, that was a great opening from Gale Force. Not only did they get the point in a pretty quick time, now Nicholas and Torque are going to have ults ready to combo to get them through this street space. And if they can get a successful uh, team fight wipe with that as, as, as they want to, they have a good shot of getting the second checkpoint. Mesra on the defense was able to take out Harblue. Harblue again being a little bit over aggro here. I think he's gotten punched for it two times in this game alone. I think he needs to dial it back at least a little bit. The offense though still pushing up the payload, still looking for the opportunity. They do note that they can use ultimates to their advantage here, but they are going to back up just a little bit. They don't want to push it at the moment. And Torque does have Graviton Surge, so there is a lot of options here for Wombo for the offense, especially between Torque and Nicholas. Yeah, they got to make sure they get to hang in it, though, as he's got Resurrection up. So if you Wombo and then you, you had to use two alls, it gets negated by one all that targets in about a minute. Oh, the Earth Shot coming in from the defense gun, knocked down quite a few. Mezwar finding the right opportunity, but the Resurrection can bring up all those Fallen. And let's see if we have ultimates now coming out here from the offense. Torque, will you find the Graviton that you're looking for? Nicholas does take out Dummy in the back. And Torque right now, not really looking, <laughs> just content to melt people's faces off. Will melt down AZK with ease. And the offense really getting almost everything they want right now. And here comes Mezwar though, ch charging in, almost takes out Torque, but will die in the process. Groton coming out, only gets a soldier, but again, down goes AZK. And not quite the Wombo combos we were expecting, but still pretty good coming out from Gale Force. No, but now they still... Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I, now they still have the barrage too. If they want to try to lock down this door, you can come over top. You don't necessarily have to use it with the graviton. Or they'll take out Dummy again too. Justice raining from ID, uh, getting immediately punched by Nicholas. Nicholas bringing justice of his own, completing the double kill and really Gale Force. I did not expect them to go through this this quickly, but Team Liquid's defense has looked absolutely shaky so far in this game. Well, all, all I was going to say is I feel like I am definitely seeing NA Overwatch right now. I mean, I understand the, the defense and Liquid trying to stay spread out because they knew that Torque was going to have his ult, but then they denied Torque getting a good Graviton Surge, but instead just all die one-on-one, -on -one, so it didn't matter anyway. And now Gale Force is pushing through to the last point, and Liquid's got to get it together, otherwise we're going to a third map. I think everything that could go wrong for Liquid here has gone wrong past the first point. So they've just been getting picked off and not winning team fights the way they need to. Mezrar's shield is going to go down. He's looking for the Earth Shadow. Will he be able to get it? Charges in, but immediately gets taken out. There will be no defensive Earth Shadow coming in. AZK did take out Nicholas with the Tac Visor, but the offense still moving forward. Here comes Sound Bearers on both sides. 
And we'll see if uh, Team Liquid is finally able to get something in their favor here. Tummy going right in the back, looking for Mercy. Lost track of her for a second. Finally, though, Shake will go down. There will be no extra res here for the offense. He goes for the death loss, but Nicholas or the top takes him out with the barrage instead. And Gale Force now very close <laughs> to taking this map, and they will. So Gale Force striking right back, beating Team Liquid's time, and evening up the series one to one. So. We, we mentioned, are going to be settling this on King of the Hill. We mentioned it was going to be between Nicholas and Torque to do it, and Nicholas had a very decent game on Farrah, but Torque was like the DPS monster on Zarya. He got so many kills. His beam was just crushing people. He stayed alive throughout most of that game, and yeah, the Graviton wasn't the huge money Graviton, but it didn't matter, because as you mentioned, even before he hit it, he's like, he's content to just left-click people, and he just absolutely nuked people with Zarya's Ghostbuster beam. That was a time of 4.43 on Dorado, and as good as Gale Force is playing, I can't help but think that that was a collapse on Team Liquid's part there. Yeah. They, uh, f You should not get beaten on Dorado that quickly, regardless of how well the other team is playing. That is in phenomenal time, but you only get that time if you're getting picked off, chaining deaths, and letting the other team just walk all over you. Yeah, it really was more a collapse on Liquid's defense. The first point looked okay in the very beginning with Dummy getting the pick on Harblue. But shortly after that, it was Gale Forest taking the first point. And then the streets phase really was the time for Liquid to delay the time as long as possible. And although they tried to stay spread out so Torque wouldn't get the Graviton and get the full kill, they just, they pick off Liquid one-on-one -on -one there. And Mez, I thought, had some good charges, had some good kills in the, in the middle, but it really wasn't enough. It, it really wasn't a cohesive defense throughout that entire map. And that's really the main reason they lost that. And now I would say that Gale Force is favored here. I, re I think that because of the practice and that this Liquid Squad, even though they have pretty good cohesion as we've seen on their own, I think a lot of it is individual skill and the, the meta shift right now. And Nepal is deathmatchy, which comes down to individual skill. But it, I still favor this to... To Gale Force. We might be able to get to see some Tracer tonight for the one of the first times as that is a, a hero that both Nicholas and Torque are very comfortable on and also finds a space into the in the meta, especially on King of the Hill. Personally, going into this, I don't really know who to favor. I do think if you go th for through history in a matchup like this, you'd probably have to give it to Gale Force. But Team Liquid did look really, really good on King's Row. So now I just I don't really know what to think here. I think Team Liquid does have the ability to fight it back, but maybe the fact that T or King of the Hill can be a little bit more hit scan focused, can be a little bit more tracer favored, maybe that will give Gale Force all they need to take it out in the end. If yeah, I, had, I think if I had to say odds in here, I mean maybe Gale Force 55 45 or Team Liquid. But again, if Team Liquid were to come out and with something really, really good, I would not be that surprised either. So could go either way for me. I think Tracer is coming from Gale Force. What do you I think so. Uh, one, one of those two will definitely run it for at least a little bit. She's so good on Nepal in nearly all of the stages, too. And the, the pulse bombs can absolutely change games when you do have teams that are generally pretty clumped up on the point. Uh, and all of these points on Nepal are pretty small areas. They're not the giant King of the Hill uh, capture points like an Ilios. So I think Tracer is great on this map. I'm also kind of biased because I like watching Tracer gameplay. So we'll see. But they do have the, the, the players who can run a very spectacular Tracer. For Liquid, it would be AZK. Probably yeah. in reply. It AZK and Dummy. I mean, ID even playing decent amount of Genji in Nuberus. And maybe he'll be the one to take over that other spot. But AZK, I would think, would be the primary tracer and not Dummy if it would have to come down. Well, to if they bust out a tracer from Gale Force, AZK might be forced onto a McCree to deal with it, you know, get the flashbang going. So it's really going to depend if he feels he can out trace or if he's going to have to out counter that too. But. Also, I mean, Soldier 76 really good on this map too, yeah. especially especially in a, a couple of the different phases too. So AZK could be running either of those. I, I, I would think to see Soldier and Reaper. We've seen just a lot of Soldier and Reaper on King of the Hill. General, especially in scrims, and Soldier's good on this map. Guess we'll have to see. I mean, Farrah also has come in a lot. I just don't okay. think it okay. should. I think teams are wrong. <laughs> They're wrong <laughs> to keep using Farah. I understand the love and infatuation. I'm a Farah main. I'm a clay player. I get it. I understand. It's not yeah. right though. It's... 
Oh, we'll Fair, see, I think maybe, is maybe. in an interesting spot. I think it's one of those cases right now where you are seeing, of course, a way less McCree and Widow. So people sort of go, okay, well, gee, Farah has problems with these heroes. Let's do more Farah. I do think you're going to see more McCree and so Farah, or sorry, more McCree and Widow coming back. And also, I think people could be playing 76 better than they've been playing him overall across the board. They can get to higher levels of skill. And when they do, I think it's also going to be a little bit rougher for Farah to get value. So we'll have to see how things go. We are in game, though, and taking a look here at the squad of Gale Force as they set up. It's going to be Shake on the Mercy, Nicholas on the Reaper, JKW on Winston, Joe Meister on Lucio, Torque on the 76, and Harblue on the Zarya. Pretty much a mirror match going on on the other side, except Mesrar is going to be playing Roadhog rather than a Winston, but AZK is going to be on that 76. Really fun battle to watch. I like the pick from Mez. I think the Roadhog is good here. I would tend to agree Roadhog's better than Winston here, yeah. Rodon and King of, the, King of the Hill in general has been playing a whole lot of sport down, but here comes the Ooh. offense, Gale Force running right in, Harbour with the double kill, aided by Nicholas. And really, uh, Team Liquid not going to be able to fight this back, a pretty clean vi uh, fight here for Gale Force, and this should give them first cap. Yeah, that's five kills to one, that's definitely uh, a pretty clean fight, and ID did a ton of damage though, he's already got Graviton up on Zarya. This is the one bright spot in that lost fight. Harbour with two big kills, I think he needed that. <laughs> You guys have confidence going uh, the first two games and not have gone. He's a ground talk coming out already. I don't think they expected this at all, but it's going to get immediately shielded out by Winston. It does not do quite as much as it like. There just wasn't the follow up immediately. Uh, Dummy does go in, takes out Joe Meister, pays for it to Nicholas. 5v5 between both teams. And here comes Attack Visor out from Torque. Torque laying in the Soldier 76 fire, takes out AZK. Uh, gets to hang as well, so Torque, um, really good 76 play coming out from him in the last uh, map uh, map or two. Well, to hang has had resurrection up for this last two deaths, which can't feel good. Uh, he's going to need to be able to stay alive a little longer, get those resurrections going. This, of course, where environmental kills can come into it. You can't res someone who's been knocked off a cliff. I'm going to. Here comes the ground top from Harbour. Four people having the group hug as the follow-up coming in from the entirety of the Gale Force squad, or Nicholas being the bulk of it, getting the triple kill. He threw in a death blossom, and Wombo Combo is real, and that's going to fully take out Team Liquid, and already a very good start here for Gale Force. Well, the entire team for Gale Force is on fire. Uh, ID, he might have gotten Gravitine early on, but it was wasted. And since then, the ult advantage has gone straight to Gale Force and made it very difficult for Liquid to even fight up in the That's right here with Thork on Nicholas. Nicholas has to back away, at least for now. Defensive er, sound barrier is out here for the side. Gale Force has, again, two more quick kills for GF as they move in. And Team Liquid really just pushed back. They're not able to get to that point here. This is not where they want to be. The offensive sound barrier gonna come out with the Death Blossom coming in. Dummy only getting one kill off of that. We'll get the double kill with the Hellfire Shotgun, however, and we'll see if Team Liquid can push, put this back in their favor. But the Resurrection gonna do a lot to stop that. Get these jokers off my point. That's a decent res by Shake, but it also gets cleaned up by this Roadhog who had ultimate too, so they're uh, gonna be able to flip this point back over. 91 is still pretty good, though, from the Elf Uh Liquid had to use a lot of their ults. Uh, Nicholas is going to have his before Dummy. Uh, other than that, if Harbour and Nicholas are able to combo, Gelforce has a slim opportunity and window here to win this round outright. All right, Dummy yeah, getting into it would... right now. Uh, looking for the pickoffs, both Wraith for a little bit early. JKW did take out ID early fight as Torque now coming in and again. I can't say enough of good about Torque. Torque has really been laying in consistent fire and looking now for ID. Will reload. Down goes ID from the Graviton. Both teams getting into it. Both teams getting bloodied. But Torque trying to hold on here. Mesoir will go down in the end. And again, just you look at Torque towards the end of, this, end of these fights. No one is on him and he's picking apart what remains of Liquid. Yeah, I'm not sure what Dummy was doing there. There was a great Graviton. He was hanging out on the point as Reaper did not go to try to clean up everyone that was in there. And the two that got grabbed lived through it. He was right next to it as Reaper. Well, round one is going to go the way of Gale Force. Now, Gale Force, after a rough start on King's Row, is one round away from bringing it back, winning 2-1 to over Team Liquid. And this would be a little bit disappointing for Team Liquid, who looked like an entirely different team back on King's Row. I mean, after the offense on Dorado, we thought they might might have been able to close I it out. Duo well right there, you. but now Gale Force is one round away from taking it two to Just one. Like and it. Liquid has to have a good opening to this round, I think, if they're going to want to bring it back. I think if they have to play um, on the upswing again, they have to try to play retake, it's not going to happen. 
Yeah, it's one of the harder points to retake, especially since Gale Force is going to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, he's going to run the, the tracer. tracer sighting too. is real. So, AZK now coming in on the Tracer, looking for an opportunity. We thought we'd see Tracer a little bit earlier here in the series, and we thought we'd see it from Gale Force, but that has not been the case here thus far. As Dummy Gang get first kill of the round, taking out Nicholas, and AZK just being a pest in the back. Not getting killed here just yet, looking for an opportunity, looking to get Mercy. As the rest of the team of Team Liquid getting in on the point. Completely cleaned up. Shake went down really early in that fight too, so he was not even going to be able to have Resurrection up. And then they followed up with four more kills. AZK in on a lot of those. That is definitely first point for Liquid. Looks good. Yeah, Liquid needed that. Now it's going to give them not some confidence and to build ults across the board. ID, AZK, Dummy all looking to have there. It's so hard to take back, especially against a team running a Tracer, just because you have so many areas you can dodge in and out to keep that timer from flipping. And Dummy's gonna be looking here for the Death Blossom here in one moment. He's Wraith forming over. He's looking for an opportunity. He's gonna get booted back, but now, if he hits Q, it could get good value, but he doesn't even do the, just that. It does take out Nicholas's ID with the follow through, and Gale Force gonna get knocked out of it here. Yeah, Shea goes uh, down very early in that fight again to IID. And what I really like about the Tracer on this map, too, is that there's once you get a couple kills, the rest of the team's gonna try to retreat. Tracer does not allow that. Uh, Lucio tried to get out, Tracer chased him down, and then staggered that death pretty late for Joe Meister. What I like about Tracer is that even though he missed the pulse bomb, he has 75% of his ult back again, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Well, here they come in, and Dummy right now with a really good flank is going to hit Q. Goes in with the Death Blossom, gets two kills to start this out, but Gale Force still coming right back into it. Resurrection going to be on the way here for the side team Liquid. It might be enough for them to hold. As both teams now fighting it out on top of the point, but overall the kill feed going very much in favor of TL. The Resurrection sound barrier letting it go in their favor. And this is a much better round for them. In fact, it's been a nearly, or a flawless round so far, 75% to zero. And if they win one more fight, they should have it. Look at Izzy Cage, back to 70. He just killed three people with the other pulse bomb. It's been, what, 20 seconds. Hex, this is faster than the Mercy Res. It's, uh, it's, yeah, but it's a little less impactful. But uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Pulse bombs are very, very powerful. Oh no, Nicholas was going in, got hooked right out by Mesrar. Ends up killing Mesrar for the trouble. And now, will he come in with the Death Blossom looking for his opportunity? All of Gale Force on top of the point. And this is where Team Liquid, they're trying to delay it from them from capping, but they're not the ones under the gun here. They can give up the point for now, go back, regroup, and they'll have about five attempts to win the round. Yeah, the hand dies early there, and that gives Gale Force time to get the point. But Liquid got got it up to 99, and they're gonna have everyone with all except for Minstrel. They may want to just wait to have all six, but I think having four four or five out of the six is good enough. Yeah, ID has to be careful. He was taking a lot of damage there before that fight even started. But yeah, we're gonna see a lot of Qs getting hit. Nicholas is going in. He is going to be hitting that Q in just a moment. Mesvar going down right away. Minstrel running away. Almost goes down as well. But meanwhile in the back, AZK doing all sorts of work on the Tracer. Gets a double kill. Here comes Nicholas with the cleanup. Goes for the Death Blossom. Doesn't get as much done as he would like as Team Liquid now retaking this point, which means that they will win this round. And we are going to be going to the third and final round here on the Paul. Liquid looking a lot more solid there. AZK doing work on Tracer. And now we're going to have to see if Gale Force responds with Torque and Nicholas on Tracer, or they're going to continue going this way. I like the lineup that Liquid has right now. Triple DPS. Ooh, here we go. Gale and let me just say that this round has huge implications, because if it does end up being Team Liquid versus Gale Force in a tie, or in a situation where they're both looking for second place in this group stage, this round right here could determine who goes in the winners tomorrow and who goes in the losers. Nicholas goes Tracer, Harbo goes Reaper, and we're going to have a mirror. Uh, so JKW will be on Winston with Mez on Zarya. I like Liquid's lineup a little better. So. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's all about if Shake can stay alive. He died a lot that game, to IID specifically. It seems like he is the one who's targeting down the Mercy at a distance, and he got a lot of work done. Both teams right now looking for the proper positioning. Team Liquid just really hiding out in this house over here. They don't want to play the high ground game. No Bastions out for any team, which we do sometimes see on this point. 
Nicholas, though, is on the tracer, going to the back line, looking to take out Reaper. Comes very close to doing so. Reaper able to wraith form way as AZK and Dummy now getting a kill each. Shake is already down. There will be no res here for Gale Force. And everything going pretty well here for Team Liquid as Dummy taking out JKW and uh, helping complete a double kill. Yeah, AZK used all of his blinks to get behind Shake, was able to get behind him up top on the bridge. No one turned around to help him out. He did a couple more blinks in and out, able to hunt down that uh, Mercy, and that pretty much wins the fight for you. Oh, here comes Gale Force, they're not wasting a whole lot of time. Nicholas already does have a pulse bomb. Gonna be looking for the stick on Lucio. Lucio, though, Zarya Shield going to deter that. As Nicholas now going around the back, looking for an opportunity. Going to get melted instead. Has to use Rewind early. Looks for the stick. Will it connect? Does take out ID. So a little bit of razzle-dazzle coming out from Nicholas. But while that was going on, AZK was doing the exact same thing to the Gale Force backline. And AZK doing it a little bit better on a quad kill right now. Just picking apart Gale Force. AZK doing so much work. Pulse bomb kills Mercy, kills Lucio, then kills Soldier and Winston. AZK carrying Liquid through this third map after a bad first round. My ultimate control is of ready. second round and now third round. They're looking like they are on their way to victory. Minstrel has sound barrier. Joe Meister does not, and they can't take this engage until he does. Here we go. All right, Mesra right now. JKW. No, the, 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 Totally on Tracer duty. He is only looking for ACK on Tracer, but it's too late. He already gets him picked on Harblu. Harblu went in for the death blossom and it got completely denied by Mezrar. Perfect Zarya play coming from Mezrar to deal with that. And he has a Graviton. Three people going to be hooked in from this. And this could be all sorts of bad for Gale Force. Mezrar fully charged up, looking to melt some Reaper face, going to punch him in the face instead. And now this should be a full team wipe here for Team Liquid. Team Liquid really bring it to Gale Force and. What was once looking so good for Gale Force here in Nepal is falling apart. They have one attempt left to retake this, and if they do not, they will lose the round and they will lose the series. No more res. Shake might have it by the time it might happen. <laughs> I guess, of course. But Dahang has his ID as his own. He's going to be able to burn it right here. He's a light. Here comes ID now with the attack visor moving in. Gun take out Shake, looking for a little bit more. Has the double kill, makes it a triple. Attack visor getting all sorts of value there for TL and. Resurrection again, bring up the Fallen, and this is looking all sorts of bad here for Gale Force. They cannot get off the point at any point now. It is overtime, but they just don't have the personnel left. And Team Liquid going the fight right back and win Nepal. So Team Liquid taking the series 2-1, to and I thought they were going to collapse towards the end, but they were able to pull it back. Hit scan domination. I mean, IID and AZK both just absolutely dominated on 76 and Tracer, more so even the Tracer, but IID just took down Shake so many times in this second stage as well, and then hit combos. I mean, I wanted to see big plays come out for Nicholas and Torque to be able to pull them through the series, and I think that's the only way this team is going to become a great team in the future for Overwatch yeah. Esports, and I think they were able to show that on the second, you know, on offense on Dorado, and then the first round of King of the Hill, but really, to me, it's all about AZK going Tracer, making plays happen, probably getting the most kills, any limbs, and a huge impact on the game. Probably more than half of his ults hit, not just one, but two players, including yep. killing Mercy and Lucio several times over, and Shake was really just not able to get anything going. And that all together is the reason why Liquid, for to me, is a little bit of an upset over Gale Force first game. Yeah, I mean, it's well, the first time seeing this new Liquid roster for me, and I had Gale Force to be able to win it. I think they've been a team that's been on on the rise for sure. They played really well. In Liquid, I was worried about their cohesion, and i did not worried about that anymore. They played super well. They didn't miss calls together, except for the little bit of a collapse on Dorado defense. But other than that, they look like a very strong team, and we're going to see exactly how strong they are, as I believe our next set is between them and Cloud9. It is our next set, and that could be an absolute...